Hey guys. So one of our Patreons has requested some info on camshaft. So I'm not going to go super in depth. This is just going to be like, I guess maybe a beginners on camshafts. Um, so we'll go to the board. I got the whiteboard out here with a little drawing. Not a very good drawing, but a drawing nonetheless. So I just wanted to talk a little bit for you guys that don't know anything about camshafts. Um, so actually maybe, let me, I'm going to grab a camshaft here. So, for you guys that never seen a camshaft out of an engine, so looking at the camshaft straight on, you see a lobe and a lobe. Hopefully you guys can see that in the video. And that's what I'm talking about here. So this is the center of the camshaft. This would be the intake lobe. This would be the exhaust lobe. Now, what I wanted to talk about, so, if you look at specs for camshafts, now there's a bunch of different companies, um, you know, that you that build camshafts. A um, couple of the big ones would be either would be Colt Cam, Hamilton Cam, Max Spool. Uh, there's a bunch of cam companies like Cam Regrinders and stuff all over the North America that that do do kind of their own take, I per se, um, on. Um, usually, I use Colt Cams. I use Colt Cams a lot. Uh, Hamilton cams a lot. Uh, they're easy for me to get. And then I also have a, a local-ish guy that I have re-grind all my camshafts. So my stock cams and all that type of stuff. So what we're going to talk about a little bit is duration. Um, and then lift. So if you're talking lift, your lift is going to be... So if this camshaft... I'm just, I gotta, I'm just looking at the sheet here. I wrote some stuff down just so I didn't forget anything. Um, we're going to talk about... A camshaft from a P-Pump 12 valve. We'll just use that for instance because that's what I got here. So the lift on it, on the intake, is... Whoop, if I knew how to write. Maybe. One day I'll learn how to write. Nah, actually, probably not. So that's the intake lift and then the exhaust i should have wrote this on there first i guess 263 263 lift and then and then our intake exhaust Duration our intake duration is one is 159 159 159 and then it was 20204 so I want to make sure there's all the list of them so I just I want to make sure that we get um, so that is our duration numbers and then our lobe separation which L S A or lobe separation um for that is 102 so for you guys i just make sure you guys can see this the way i want i have to have it on a little bit of an angle just so that it's not uh i'm not in the way when we're doing it here so anyways um now talking about that now that i got all these numbers written down what do these numbers mean so these, and there's lots of videos on this stuff, but I just thought I'd just, I'm going to do a brief thing on it. So the lift on the intake, so this is your intake. Intake, exhaust. And obviously it's not supposed to look like, you know, a bunny or something, I don't know. Not supposed to look like a bunny, but it does kind of look like a bunny or a cat or something. Because it looks like a cat, kind of. So... Now, if you're talking to lift, your 235 lift. So basically, this is going to, from the center of here to here, you are going to lift 235 thou. That's how far it's going to open the valve. So it's not going to be 235 thou lift here, but that's how much it will open the valve. 
So you have to know your rocker ratio. Your rocker ratio on a 12 valve, 12 valve rocker ratio. If I knew how to spell ratio is one. Oh, I'm gonna put that right in the way and I need to write something there. Rocker ratio is 1.75. Now, so you have to multiply, but that's how much the valve is gonna open with this camshaft using this rocker ratio. So any push rod engine is gonna, you need to use the rocker ratio. Now, the duration that that camshaft, that the, this intake valve is gonna be open is 159 degrees. And that's at 50 thou. So when I was doing the cam, for you guys that watched it, um, if you haven't, you should go back and watch it. I did a camshaft video on degreeing your camshaft and I talk a little bit about this. So when you're checking your lift, you need to, you, you're going to be, uh, the industry standard is that 50 thou of rotation or 50 thou lift, sorry. Now that's just the way that they always do it. But, but 159 degrees of crank rotation and then your exhaust valve is going to be open for 204 degrees of crankshaft rotation now where the overlap comes into play is how how much time is the intake and the exhaust valve both of these this is overlap how long both of these will be open Hey guys, uh, the audio in this part got screwed up, so I just figured I'd uh, just do it this way. But anyways, um, so on the um, on this on a gas engine, you're talking your lobe separation. The tighter your lobe separation um, in degrees, the choppier the idle will be. So in a diesel, it works the same kind of idea, but they're a little bit different because um, of compression ratio and all that stuff. But if you look at it, 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 it does the same way. So in these, the bigger camshaft will actually have a less, or I guess more, um, I should say more uh, lobe separation, which actually will smoothen the idle out. Uh, but because you're doing more lift and more duration, it kind of compensates for that a little bit. But a lot of times guys, are, oh, it's got a big camshaft in it. And that really doesn't make the change um, a huge lope or anything that's more injection and that type of stuff. But anyways, we'll go back to the regular video right now in any engine myself personally. Um, but to each his own, don't get me wrong. I have played with it. I got a, the 280, uh, 281 or the Hamilton, uh, 181, 220 in the truck right now. And I, uh, I'm going to pull it out and put a different camshaft in it when we do the, when we switch the engine to from truck to truck, uh, because I don't like the camshaft, but that's just for what I'm doing. And there's nothing wrong with the camshaft. It's just for what I'm doing with it. I don't like it. So now hopefully this gives you kind of a little bit of an idea of what we're talking about when you're talking lobe separation. So if you get a camshaft like a 180, like a, let's say we were just talking 180, uh, 181. Oh, my marker's getting dry. 181, 220. Uh, or a stage four camshaft, which is very, it's similar to this. So that's what they're talking about is a 181, 220. Your one, this is gonna be your intake duration. And this is your exhaust duration. I don't know what the lift off the top of my head or the lobe separation on one of those is uh, from Hamilton, but that that's what it's telling you. So your in, your intake valve is going to be open at 181 degrees of crank rotation, verse and so that's versus your stock one at 159, and then your exhaust is going to be open 220 versus 204. So basically, it lets more air in and more air out for the simple. That's the simplest way to explain it. More to it than that, but that's the simplest way to explain it. Now, when you're talking getting into camshafts, what should I put for a camshaft? What do I need for a camshaft? Now, there is a hundred different things to go into this as far as camshafts. Now, personally for me, I'm gonna erase this, so I'll let it sit there just for a minute. Um, 
but that just gives you a general idea. Hopefully I, that explained it. Um, it's hard to explain in a short period of time, but that's just like a general idea. Now, if you're talking, let's say, depending on what kind of engine, but we do a lot of 12 valve stuff on the channel so far. So let's talk about a 12 valve. So let's say you have a 12 valve that you are rebuilding, let's say, and you're rebuilding the 12 valve and you want to put a little bit more camshaft in it, but you're staying like a 350 to 400 horsepower engine. Personally, if it was me, this is my opinion, you can say whatever you want. I personally would put a stage two camshaft in it, which is just so I don't have to go back and forth to that. I just, I know what it is. I just don't know all the numbers off the top of my head. So stage two, stage two, intake, exhaust, 175, what is it here? 175, 250, no, 175, 210, 10 degrees. I guess I really don't need to put the lift and all that stuff on there, but it takes your, so I'll just read it off to you. So your lobe separation is going to change. Going to a stage two, your lobe separation is going to change, change two degrees. So two, two more degrees to 104. And then your, your exhaust lift is 307. Lift two oh, no, sorry, 307. 51. Just want to make sure I got the numbers right in my head. So now that going from the stock camshaft. All right, so stocking, talking stock camshafts, that VP44, the 98202 camshaft, um, which is, here, I'll write that down for you. I said, I don't want to make this video too long because lots of you guys won't watch it if it's too long. I know some of you guys will watch it, it doesn't seem to matter, but um, just for you guys that do want to, there it is right there. So 159, intake, exhaust, 159, 206. And the lobe separation is seven and a half. That is a stock camshaft. And the lift on it, you are 230, 235. Lift. So that shows you, like, obviously it's not the same as this camshaft. This camshaft has a little bit more lift and a little bit more duration, but it actually has, you know, it actually has less lobe separation. Um, but there again, it's all, the lobe separation a lot, it helps a lot with scavenging, stuff like that, which isn't as big a deal in a diesel for emissions standards anyway. So that would be the camshaft if you had. The only issue with that, if you're using that on a 12 elf, is that it doesn't have, have a, um, a lobe for a lift pump. So if you have a lift pump on it, if you wanna use it like a mechanical lift pump, you cannot with this camshaft, you have to use an aftermarket pump of wh whatever brand you choose. Um, and I will get into talking more about that later. Um, I've run a bunch of different ones. Um, never had, had a big issue with any of them, but here we are. So, my opinion, if you're talking um, a stockish, let's say under 500 horsepower engine, um, both of these are a good option, or you can run, there again, you can run a stock camshaft. Um, nothing wrong with the stock camshaft. So talking about stock engine, um, I personally, if I'm rebuilding one, I personally usually use this, unless the guy was just doing a completely stock engine. Usually I'll do a stage two camshaft in it. Um, if it's something, you know, the guy doesn't want to spend a lot of money on and we have a good used one of a camshaft, 
um, or we're just doing, you know, monkeying around, personally monkeying around. Sometimes I will use something like this because if you have it, you know, it doesn't cost you anything, that's cool. There again, same with stock camshaft, but lots of times I'm sending stock camshafts away to be ground anyway. So lots of times if I'm not using a new camshaft, I'm using a regrind, which is quite common. Um, I will have them ground into a stage two because it only cost me $35 more to have them ground into a stage two versus a sta uh, stock. So that's what I do. Now talking about a higher performance engine, there is a lot that goes into that. So I'm not gonna get into that, um, but a lot of that has to do with RPM, head flow, turbos you're using, um, you know, that type of stuff. And then you get into a common rail and then the game changes again. So I'm not gonna get into talking too much about that because I don't want, to, I don't want you guys to get in over your head and this video to be five hours long. But I did wanna show, let's show you guys. So I did wanna show you guys. I got some camshafts here that have to be sent out. All these ones need to be reground. Um, this is just from a couple a couple months worth of camshafts. Um, but I'm running low on camshafts, so we have to send them out. Now, what I wanted to show you guys, um, if you look, if you look, look, bleh, if you look, um, this camshaft here, so this is out of a uh, 98, um, like a VP44 truck. I don't know if it's a 98, but VP44 truck. And you look at this camshaft. Just dropped on my foot here. Get this one over here. If you look right here, I realize they're not perfectly lined up. See that little lobe right there? That's where your fuel pump gets its fuel from. This one does not have that. And you can also see too, see how wide the lobe is? versus how wide this lobe is, this lobe is wider. And then if you get into a common rail cam, get into a common rail cam, then like the difference between these two, they're, they're wider, right? Now, if you take this cam, uh, actually I think there's a, yeah. And then there's even a, a narrower one right there versus that one. Like see how much wider that is versus like they're considerably wider. So, just so you guys understand, not all camshafts are equal. There's some better than others. You could run a common rail camshaft in a 12 valve if you want, I have done so. Even though I've been told you cannot do that, I have done that. You there again, can't run your lift pump off of it because there is no lift pump load, but you can run one in there. How much extra we got out of it? No, I don't know, but it, you can. So, um, as far as camshaft goes, if you're doing a relatively stock truck, I would upgrade it to a little bit better myself or leave it stock. Um, if you're rebuilding it, if you're just for the sake of changing the camshaft, if you're not making, if you're making below 500 horsepower, I, I personally wouldn't spend the time or the money unless you're already in there. If you have to go in there because you have to take the timing case off or something like that. Okay. A stage two camshaft would not hurt if you have if you want to put a decent size set of compounds on it you can stuff the camshaft up a little bit but you have to watch because you lose your drivability changes and that's actually the reason that i don't like that 181 220 in my truck is that i do drive the truck all well i shouldn't say all the time but i do drive the truck a lot um it's fine when you're driving around but it's a little bit snotty like the way that the truck's set up with the pump and the injectors and all that stuff and the timing that i run i'm going to go back a step in camshaft um, I'm probably actually going to go to a one that I custom, I have custom made for myself. Um, well, I won't get into that because it's a custom grind, but the one it's what I classify as a heavy tow truck, a uh, heavy tow cam. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to use one of those in there for myself. Um, and anyways, if you are looking for camshafts, uh, as soon as the website is up sooner than later, I will have the link down below when the website is live. If you're looking for a camshaft lifters, any parts for your Cummins, you will find them down there, um, or the stuff that I use. I shouldn't say everything, but the stuff that I use will be in there. And uh, like, subscribe, hit me down in the comments. Anything you, could, anything you want me to do a video on, um, let me know. I will do my best to do a video on it for you. Okay, thanks guys. And remember, it's not rocket science.